Welcome to another edition of Crocomo's County Report. And today, uh, we have a guest speaker, uh, Walter Griffiths, our controller. Welcome, Walter. Good. good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. It's good to have you here. First of all, I would like you to explain uh, to the audience, uh, what is uh, the controller and what does the controller do? Well, the controller in Luzerne County is the, is the independent watchdog for the people. He's the eyes and ears of the people. He's the person who's the elected official who helps the administration on the executive branch and helps the legislative branch on the legislative side to know problems or things that are working well or not working well. He's the person who's independent of all of those uh, hiring and firing issues so that they, he could bring an independent perspective to the administration. And you're an elected official. An elected official. Okay. And uh, part of your job duties uh, is to conduct audits, correct? Yep. yep. Part of the job of the controller is to do, uh, perf in, in the state county code where we used to be before we went to home rule, it used to be the controller was responsible for a whole length of things. They were a retirement board, they were on payroll, they, they did accounts payables, they reported to commissioners. So when we went with home rule, they changed the scope of the controller's job to be the independent watchdog of the county to review programs, policies, procedures. Uh, we, do, we do do some financial, but we don't do any accounts payable. That's all done by the administration now. We don't do anything with retirement. That's administration. So all of those things have been taken off of the controller's duties. So we could be more available to do this independent stuff of watching programs and, pro and uh, procedures and report to the manager and to the council. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the audits that uh, I know that uh, you've done, just off the top of my head, uh, tax collectors. You do the audit of the tax collectors, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do all, we do all, we have 76 municipalities in the county and we audit every tax collector in the county for compliance mostly, make sure that they're following the tax collector laws by the state and also make sure that they're turning over the right amount of funds to the county on the county side. And then obviously the municipalities does their own audits. Okay. And do you do those every year or every other year? We, we have a lot of tax collectors, there's 76 tax collectors, so we try to break them up over two mm -hmm. years. Uh, this year we've done about 32 tax collectors this year. Uh, next year we hope to get the other 40 some done. And when we get those done, then we'll rotate back through. So every other year we'll hit the tax collectors. And some of the other uh, audits that uh, you've done, you audit the magistrates, yes. correct? Yeah, we audit all 16 district magistrate offices. We're in the prior code before we were home rule, it was required of the controller mm -hmm. to do all 16. When we went with home rule, now it's at the discretion of the controller to do whichever ones they want. We're trying to get caught up on the ones that haven't been done and put those in the past, they were all done every year they had to be. We had a special person in the office was called a magistrate auditor back in state county code, mm -hmm. but we don't have that anymore. So we have to space out the work because we're pretty limited on staff. Right, and uh, you also do uh, audits of county funds um, and uh, you've done one with the prison, correct? Yep, we do the commissary. We're required by state uh, prison uh, corrections law to do a cop, uh, an audit of the correctional facility uh, commissary fund and also the inmate account. Okay. And we do that every year. Okay, and you do that other county funds as well, correct? Yeah, yeah we do, we do uh, all, well, we do the, the prison mostly. And then we also go out and we look at uh, all the bank accounts to make mm -hmm. sure they're being reconciled. And uh, just a general overview. We don't get into the uh, general accounting principles uh, for accounting, right. but we are oversight. And uh, we've been collaborating on a lot of different projects uh, since I started in May, and I, I want to publicly thank you for all the help that uh, you've given me and the administration. So uh, let's highlight one of them. Uh, uh, we're converting uh, our, our uh, accounts totally uh, to a system uh, in New World, correct? Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about sure. that? Well, under your direction as the county manager, we've we've made a lot of changes over the over the past couple of months since you've been here, uh, because we have the flexibility now with the controller to work with the administration and the legislative branch, which we didn't have in prior manager functions. It was very combative in the older function uh, with the other previous county managers. Uh, the new county manager, which is uh, Ms. Crocomo, has taken the approach that 
She wants the input from the controller's office. She wants the input from, from the county council. She wants input from all of her staff. So together as a team, we can make things better in the county. And that's basically the goal of the manager as well as the controller and all elected officials. Mm -hmm. That should be our goal. And so when we look at uh, payroll particularly, and the task that's involved to produce a payroll check for an employee, we were doing it through three steps. We were doing it through New World, which, is, which was our main, uh, main accounting software. Mm -hmm. Then we transferred that information from Kronos, which was our time clock system, which the commissioners put in back in the day. That was their gift to the county. Uh, that time clock system had to talk to New World, and then New World would have to actually export that information to ADP, which is a, a processing company to produce the actual checks. Mm -hmm. Very, very cumbersome, very time consuming, uh, and very staff intensive, for lack right. of a better term. So we are uh, combining an awful lot of resources to do a task that happens every two weeks. So under uh, the manager's direction, we reached out and we did a, uh, a study and we found out that we, New World actually can do it all in one. And so under the manager's direction again, we. Uh, talked to New World and found out what the cost was going to be. We were able to use the interest money that we accrue over the years so it doesn't cost the taxpayers any money, which is another plus for the manager and the administration. So we we're able to bring that process around so it's more efficient, more effective, more accurate because let's face it, if we transfer data three times, something's going to get lost. Right. So this way we transfer data once and Again, we, we changed the policy about everybody punching in and out, mm -hmm. if you remember. Uh, under the direction of the controller, I brought to the attention of the manager that some employees were, were still working under COVID rule, and COVID rule was everybody was auto pay, we called it, because right. we didn't have the ability to punch in and out. So now we changed that under the direction of the manager to say everybody has to punch in, everybody has to punch out, even the manager's punching mm -hmm. in and out. And that's, that's important because it's the taxpayer's money, we need to know who's in the building. It's a safety issue. It's an accountability issue for the taxpayers. And, and the administration recognized that and changed that policy. So now we're moving forward in the position of doing payroll with one software system, which is great. So this is a wrap for another episode of Crocomo's County Report. We'll see you soon.